Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elias from the Department of Education, Hazara University, Mansehra. Um, in this presentation, I would like to discuss triangulation in social science research. Um, so we will respond to these three basic questions. What is triangulation? Why is triangulation uh, needed in uh, social science researches? and how actually we can do triangulation in social science researches. So we will begin with a general definition of what triangulation is. Triangulation basically is the process of using more than one data sources or more than one data collection and analysis methods and theories in a research study. Um, it could also be defined as the use of multiple data sources, data collection and analysis techniques, and of the use of more than one theories to explore answers to our research questions um, or to our hypotheses, or actually to achieve our objectives. So, in summary, we can say that the use of more than one data sources, data collection methods, uh, data analysis methods and techniques, and the use of more than one theories um, in our research in order to find answers to our research questions, or to actually respond to our research hypotheses, or to achieve our research objectives, is called the process of triangulation. Now we go and uh, discuss the why of triangulation. In other words, why do we need triangulation in the research process? Um, there are a number of ways in which we can respond to this question. And there are a number of factors that actually impact our decision to make use of triangulation in the research process. These include our, our philosophical positions as researchers or our philosophy of research. Uh, so there are a number of philosophical positions when we are conducting social science research. And one of the, those positions is pragmatism. A pragmatist approach to research actually means that ends justify means. In other words, the researchers are actually interested in getting answers to their questions in whatever way um, that is possible. So the method of data collection or data analysis or the sources of data is not important. The importance is actually um, the finding the, the answers to our research questions. And so the pragmatic school of thought is where the triangulation idea actually resides in. Um, again, there are other considerations because of which we make use of triangulation in our researches and that include enhancing the validity of the research process and the research product. Similarly, reliability uh, of the research process is also something that is generally associated with um, the use of triangulation or the use of multiple methods of data collection and analysis that is uh, related to enhancement of reliability and the rigor of the research process and product. Um, authenticity and credibility is also something, authenticity of the research process and credibility of the research process is also associated with the use of more than one ways uh, to explore the research issue. And it is considered as something that adds to the authenticity and credibility of the research process and product. In other words, it is more authentic to explore an issue from um, using more than one research methods or one, uh, more than one data collection methods or data analysis methods. Um, and the other reason 
uh, that makes the use of triangulation useful is that it counters the drawbacks of single research methods. In terms of the breadth that comes with it and the depth, so triangulation methods are generally used in mixed method research designs where both qualitative and quantitative research methods are used. And this actually is to counter or to deal with the possible weaknesses of one or another um, research method. One or another research method means either quantitative research methods such as questionnaires or qualitative research methods such as observation or, um, or, or in-depth in interview. So this is triangulation is used in order to counter the possible weakness of the use of a single research method. Now we move on to the next question, which is the how question. So how is triangulation actually done in research, in social science researches? The Denton and Lincoln have identified um, a number of ways in which triangulation can be uh, incorporated in our research process. And so they have categorized that into data triangulation. Data triangulation actually means the use of a variety uh, with respect to the sample of respondents or the sources of data. So, so if the researcher use, make, makes use of more than one sources of data, that will be data triangulation. For example, an issue explored through the perspectives of um, students as well as teachers will actually have data triangulation. Um, and sim so using more than one sources of data in order to find answers to the same set of questions is actually data triangulation. Similarly, methods of data collection or analysis, so triangulation in terms of the use of methods of data collection and analysis. So if the researcher makes use of a variety in data collection or analysis methods, or if the researchers make use of a variety of, of, of a number of data collection and analysis methods, such as data collection through interviews as well as through questionnaires and through observations that and then make use of relevant analysis methods in order to analyze that data. That will be the triangulation in terms of methods of data collection and analysis. Then we come to triangulation in terms of investigators or researchers triangulation. And this actually means involving more than one researchers in the process of research. This also aids to the authenticity, triangulation, and, and the validation process of research. Generally, this is possible when uh, the researchers are more than one, um, such as partners in a research project, etc. But this is generally not possible when uh, the research is being conducted as student researcher because the student researchers such as researchers, the PhD researchers or MPhil researchers are generally lone researchers and they are single researchers. So this type of triangulation is generally possible when, there, when more than one researchers are actually involved in the research process. Um, then <clears throat> the theoretical triangulation um, is the other type of triangulation that actually means that analysis and interpretation of data or findings from more than one theoretical perspectives. Generally, in most research, especially in quantitative researches or in mixed method researches, there are certain theories um, that, uh, that are actually helpful in, in terms of um, our data analysis and interpretation. And so if there are more than one theories that are in play while the researchers are um, analyzing or interpreting the data, that will be theoretical triangulation. And that actually is something that is deemed to 
a to the validity um, and to the depth and authenticity of the research process and the interpretation and analysis process as well. So in summary, um, these four are the main ways in which triangulation actually happens in, um, in the social science research process. The data triangulation, the methods of data collection and analysis, triangulation and triangulation in terms of involving more than one researchers, and triangulation in terms of theoretical um, analysis uh, involving more than one theories in order to analyze and interpret data. Now we move on to the last part of the presentation, which is actually what are some of the factors that actually affect triangulation or the process of triangulation. Um, so one of the most important factors that that actually impact the decision um, to use triangulation is the philosophical stance or position of the researcher. Generally, researchers with pragmatist uh, views uh, or researchers who are actually followers of the pragmatic school of thought where ends justify means um, make use of triangulation in their research studies. Then the aims of the research will also uh, play their role in the, um, in the use of triangulation. Um, so different research uh, studies have different objectives and that will, that will actually play because certain objectives will not be possible to achieve through one uh, research method or through singular research method. And so that is something that will play their role in, the, in, in deciding whether to use triangulation or not. Then comes the research topic or area, which is also very important. There are certain research topics that are more uh, open to exploring through single res research methods, but then there are other research topics that are more usefully explored through the use of multiple research methods or in other words, through using triangulation. Then there are certain practical considerations as well that the researchers need to take care of while, while they're deciding on whether to use triangulation or not. And one of those is time. In many cases, uh, mixed method research designs or research designs where there is more triangulation is involved need more time, uh, but certain research studies, especially research studies at the, the, that student researchers conduct, they, they have to be done in a certain amount of time. And, and so there are time limits on that. And that is something that will impact whether to use triangulation or not. Again, the resources is always very important in most research processes, but especially in student, student research studies, they do not have unlimited resources. Triangulation will actually means that the researcher needs to have more resources in order to do, to collect um, data through different sources and then to analyze the data using different methods. So again, the availability or lack of availability of resources will play its role in the process of, in, in the decision whether to use triangulation or not. Access to sources of data. Again, this is a very important practical consideration. So the researchers might want to use to get to particular sources of data or to use particular techniques of data collection. But then whether that is in the access of the researcher or not, that is something that will play its role. For example, a researcher might want to conduct direct interviews with participants, but if that is not possible, that kind of triangulation might not be practicable. Um, then we have research expertise of the researchers is also something that will play its role or that will impact the decision of the researcher whether to use triangulation or not. Um, some researchers might have expertise in, let's say, in qualitative data analysis, 
Others might have expertise in quantitative data analysis. Generally, expertise in both is, uh, is something that is not very likely in many cases, especially if the researcher is a single um, individual researcher or a student researcher. So expertise of the researcher, researchers in terms of, uh, of, of actually uh, using different data sources or different data techniques or, or actually analyzing data that is coming through different sources is something that's quite important. And so the use of one method or more than one methods or the decision to make use of triangulation or not to make use of triangulation will also be impacted by the researcher's expertise. So these are some of the factors that actually affect the process of triangulation. Generally, triangulation is aimed at uh, bringing more rigor uh, to the research process and making the research process more authentic and adding to the validity and reliability of the research process. So I hope this uh, brief, um, this brief lecture, this brief talk might have um, actually led to some more questions on your mind. So if you have questions uh, related to this topic or, or related to to topics relevant to this particular issue, uh, you are welcome to ask those questions. Thank you for your time. Take care. Bye.